Imagination Storybooks presents Obachan Told Me, Gaman, A Child's View of Topaz Written by Samantha Matsukawa Narrated by Cindy K. Audio description narrated by Kensuke Nakamura And written by Miriam Snyder From illustrations by Aaron Asano Swenson On the cover, on a beige background Two large hands cup two smaller hands holding folded orange, yellow, and red paper flowers. In 1941, my family was among people of Japanese ancestry called Nikkei, living in California. Black and white framed photographs hang on branches of a leafless tree. In the photos, at the top of the tree, an older woman smiles. On the lower branch on the left, a man in glasses and a suit and tie holds a smiling woman. On a branch below on the right, a teenage boy in glasses stares. On a low branch on the left, a girl with short black hair and a bob grins. On the very bottom, a dog with floppy ears and scraggly chin hair sits. Life with mother, father, brother, Obatan, my grandmother, and our little dog was full, bright, and beautiful. All that changed on December 7, 1941. We heard the radio broadcast that the American naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii was bombed by the Japanese. I wasn't sure what that meant. In a black and white photograph, the man in glasses, father, puts his arm around the woman, mother's, shoulder. He wears suspenders and a cardigan. He holds her hand. A radio sits on the table next to them but mother and father looked worried. We were American, but overnight something changed. Because of our Japanese ancestry, we looked like the enemy. I was Nisei, meaning I was born in America, not Japan. I was a US citizen, but that didn't matter to people who could only see me as other, as an enemy. Four colorful posters display cartoons. On the first, on a red background, two men turn a wheel on a flat press. A Japanese man lies between the pressure plates. Words on the poster. You and I beat the promise. Put the squeeze on the Japanese. On the second, a mousetrap labeled Material Conservation snaps shut on a mouse with a Japanese flag hat, slanted eyes, buck teeth, and glasses. On the third, a fist punches a Japanese man in the face. Words surround the picture. Don't save his face. Every blow counts in the battle for production. The fist has a tattoo. American labor. On the last, a Japanese soldier with no face floats with his hands spread. His glasses and hat fly from his missing face. A sword hangs from his side. On a red background, Knock the pan off Japan. Be a 100% production soldier. Back up our battle skies. The U.S. government believed us to be the enemy too and enacted Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942. The order meant we had to leave. It meant that the government would remove all the Nikkei living in Washington, Oregon, and California from the West Coast. The government gave us 10 days. 10 days to sell our home. 10 days to pack what we could carry. Ten days to say goodbye to our life in California. In watercolor, a chimney rises from a red-trimmed roof. Green trees grow in front of a white house. Fog obscures the front of the house. The concentration camps they would send us to were not ready yet, so we spent four and a half months at the Tanferan Assembly Center. I learned Assembly Center was just a fancy name for an old racetrack. We slept in a stall that still smelled like the horse that lived there before us. In the fall of 1942, they gave us tags with the number 13453. We labeled our suitcases and ourselves. Our family was now 13453, and we were put on a train heading east, heading to Topaz, Utah, in black and white, the little girl stands on bundles of their belongings next to her brother. Luggage tags with the number 13453 lie on a map of the United States. 
A triangle marks Topaz in Utah. We arrived in the desert. Barbed wire fences, guard towers, searchlights, and armed soldiers. Barbed wire lines the right edge of a grainy black and white photograph. Rows of dark buildings stand at the base of a mountain. We were no longer free. Barbed wire lines the left edge of the page. Snippets of torn newspaper hang over the buildings. No Japs in our schools. Japanese. Welcome to Topaz City. Executive Order Number 8972, dated December 11th. Open war on U.S. with bombing of Hawaii. Our new home was a tar paper barracks. The barbed wire winds around the top of the page and down the right. A building stands. A step leads to a white door and black paper walls. Wind blew through the cracks between the boards that made up the walls as we unpacked the few belongings we brought with us. The barbed wire frames the bottom of the page. A dresser stands next to a wood-burning stove. Plain single bed frames with thin mattresses sit against the opposite wall in the otherwise barren room. As I looked around me at the place we now had to call home, an unbearable weight set in. The girl hugs her knees, framed in a circle of barbed wire. We were being held prisoner. What were we supposed to do now? That's when Obachan sat me on her lap and said, We must practice gaman. We must accept what is with dignity. We must find ways to endure this seemingly unbearable circumstance together and persevere. The girl closes her eyes and rests her head on her hands. A hand rests in her hair. The first way that gaman worked its way into our lives was at home in our barracks. We stuck fluffy milkweed pods into the open spaces between the boards to block out the wind and the cold. Father made a table, chairs, and shelves out of scrap lumber he found in the camp. In color, a table and chairs stand next to the stove. Books stand on a shelf. Green sheets lie on the beds. Once the schoolhouse was ready, we spent our days learning just like kids outside of the camps. In photos, boys and girls stand outside a building. Girls lean over papers, writing. Standing children put their hands over their hearts. My third grade class even started a diary to record our daily thoughts about camp life. Pages from a book called Our Daily Diary display drawings of a sun shining over a fence, lizards on the rocky desert ground, an American flag, and English handwriting. When we needed to spread important information in camp, we mustered a sense of gaman and started the Topaz Times. It was our own newspaper where news from the outside world, as well as life within the barbed wire fence, was shared. In photos, young men lean over a paper. A man draws a cartoon. Another man arranges a layout. Different Topaz Times editions display pages in both horizontal English and vertical Japanese writing. We even had our own baseball teams. Our spirit of Gama moved us to build a baseball diamond where games and tournaments were played. Imagine us, the people who the U.S. government thought were un-American, enjoying our love for America's favorite pastime. In black and white photos, an American flag hangs over a barbed wire fence. A baseball team smiles. A batter swings in front of a crowd. The guard towers remained. The lives we knew before we came to Topaz seemed so far away. But we were enduring. We were bringing what beauty we could to life behind barbed wire. Gaman brought us together to help make life better for each other. A guard tower stands near a hill. It was unbearable, but we found ways to persevere. Our lives became our own makeshift work of art shaped by Gaman. We would learn that some things cannot be changed by Gaman, but life persists. When Brother got his letter calling him to join the U.S. Army as part of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, we learned he would be leaving for war. In photos, 
Brother wears a uniform. The photos fade. No glimmer of light was found, just the darkness of worry and missing. A lone post stands tall in front of mountains. Life in Tobaz went on. We spent three years living imprisoned within the barbed wire fence, under the eyes of armed guards. Three years enduring the unimaginable. Three years practicing gaman to persevere. Barbed wire hangs over photos. Nemaki, Japanese pajamas hanging on a clothesline. A man and woman holding a baby and a blonde girl doll. A woman typing on a typewriter. Two girls smiling together on a path. A Japanese woman stands over the shoulder of an older white man behind a desk. He checks her paperwork while another Japanese woman sits taking notes. In October of 1945, Topaz was closed. Some families chose to relocate to places like Chicago, St. Louis, and Salt Lake City. My family decided to return to our life in California. Life was not how we left it in 1942. We had no house, and my father had no job. We returned to nothing, but we were free. The barbed wire turns into cherry blossoms. On a map of the United States, four states are highlighted in red, California, Utah, Illinois, and Missouri. No more armed guards. No more barbed wire. Together, we had created our own kind of beauty in Topaz. We had found ways to endure the unimaginable while in camp. We could do this. We could rebuild. The spirit of Gaman would help us continue with dignity, and our lives bloomed in beautiful and surprising ways. Cherry blossoms cover the leafless tree. A large photo in the center shows father, mother, brother, Obachan, and the girl. Framed photos of families hang on other branches. For many Nikkei, a part of Gaman became sharing only the bright spots of time spent in concentration camps like Topaz. But I believe we can find power and dignity in telling our whole story, a story we share with many others. Our identity as Americans was denied. Our own government treated us like we were the enemy. Acting out of hate and fear, the United States imprisoned over a hundred thousand of its own citizens without cause. Nine photographs. The first, a car parks in front of a store. A sign hangs, I am an American. The second, a woman points to a sign hanging over a porch. Japs keep moving. This is a white man's neighborhood. The third, a sign hangs on a store. Closing out, evacuation sale. The fourth, a sign, get in trim for fighting him. A cartoon of a man with slanted eyes, glasses, and buck teeth. Swim at Sutro's. The fifth, a group of children and adults stand together with packed luggage. The sixth, a small child sits on sheets, bags, and belongings. The seventh, a man and woman hand paperwork to a guard by a barbed wire gate. The eighth, people stand near a bus with the destination marked as special. The ninth, horse stables with impounded handwritten underneath. During a time when others projected hate and fear upon us because of our Japanese ancestry, Gaman inspired us to persevere as a family. Obachan said, we must practice gaman. Always we, not you or I. Whatever we faced, we faced it together. We must continue this spirit of perseverance and unity when we confront the hate and fear in the world today and stand with those who are trying to make positive change. Together we can go beyond enduring and make our world a bright and beautiful place for everyone. Cherry blossom branches surround a globe. This has been Obachan Told Me Gaman, A Child's View of Topaz, written by Samantha Matsukawa, narrated by Cindy K. Audio description narrated by Kensuke Nakamura, and written by Miriam Snyder. From illustrations by Aaron Asano Swenson.
This has been a production of Imagination Storybooks at imaginationstorybooks.org.